Hey everybody, and thanks for clicking on this video and checking out my channel. I've been talking a lot of Spider-Man lately on this channel, and with Spider-Man Far From Home now in theaters, the latest Spider-Man movie, it's going to be a little while before we can talk about the webhead on this channel once again. So I thought it'd be fun to cap off our journey of going through all the Spider-Man live action movies by ranking all of them from my least favorite to my favorite. Full disclosure, these will be the live action Spider-Man films, so I will not be including the fantastic animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse in this ranking. I just want to focus on the live action films and where they rank for me from the worst to the best. If you'd like to talk about these movies with me, I welcome you to do so and I'd love for you to do so. And be sure to rank your favorites from the worst to the best down in the comment section below. And with all that out of the way, let's kick off our Spider-Man rankings with number 7. And at number 7 we have... Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 had a lot of potential to be a really great Spider-Man movie, but unfortunately the movie gets dragged down with too many subplots, too many characters, too many studio interferences, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker really feels like he doesn't have the focus that he deserves, and all the plot lines and characters that they put into the movie don't always feel like they work coherently and mesh well together. It's painstakingly obvious that a lot of the stuff in this movie is there to set up a Sinister Six movie that the studio wanted to do, and they wanted to use this movie as their launching pad and as their setup for the movie, and all that interference and setup really bogged this movie down really ended up being its demise, and with the Amazing Spider-Man series now being cancelled, there's a lot in this movie that doesn't go anywhere, doesn't have a resolution, and not even some fantastic action sequences, and the fantastic chemistry between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone can save this movie from not feeling like a gigantic waste of time nowadays. At number 6 we have Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 really fails to deliver on the fantastic setups that Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2 had going for it. The villain of Harry is completely wasted by giving him amnesia. Sandman feels kind of pointless, or at least not given the focus that he deserves if they're really going to set up this villain as being a major conflict in Peter's life and in this movie. And Venom really does feel shoehorned in. Even though I don't hate Topher Grace as much as a lot of other people do, you could have completely removed the character of Eddie Brock and Venom, or at least just give him a little setup in this movie. This movie really should have focused on Harry as the villain and the conflict between Harry and Peter like the previous movies have been setting up, but instead we get a really annoying performance and irritating Peter Parker by Tobey Maguire. James Franco as Harry Osborn has almost nothing to do in this movie, if he's not being portrayed as a complete goof and a non-threatening villain at all. The best performance in the movie is probably Kristen Dunst as Mary Jane Watson, but even her and Peter together as a couple that have been building up in the previous movies are an awful couple together, they're not fun to watch. And even though this movie is a completely disappointing sequel to Spider-Man 2, I put it above The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because in the right light you really can watch this movie as a so bad it's good movie. There's a lot of really ridiculous terrible stuff in this movie mostly relating to Emu Peter which can honestly get so ridiculous that it's a lot of fun to laugh and poke fun at. So I have Spider-Man 3 at number 6. Coming in at number 5 we have Mark Webb's first, The Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man to me does feel like it wants to be a romance movie in high school more so than it wants to be a Spider-Man movie. But even so, that romance between Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker is really endearing to watch. The actors have fantastic chemistry. Andrew Garfield does give a pretty good performance as Peter Parker, even if he's not the relatable Peter Parker that I necessarily like to see on screen. They do have an interesting setup with a mystery about his parents that doesn't end up going anywhere. But I can't deny that this movie is not okay. It's got some fun action sequences in it. It's got a couple funny moments. In my opinion, it's not a very good Spider-Man film, but it's an okay Spider-Man film, and one that I don't mind putting off from time to time. And coming up next, at number 4, is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming for me. Spidey's first solo entry in the MCU is a lot of fun. Tom Holland is a great Peter Parker, and is my favorite Peter Parker because he's so relatable. The high school environment that John Watts is able to create, it's very down to earth, it feels very grounded, which results in this Spider-Man being in a very grounded and small suburban environment that doesn't really leave itself to have huge gigantic action sequences in it, but it still manages to have some small scale Spidey action that's a lot of fun to watch. With the inclusion of Iron Man in this movie, really connects it to the MCU, gives Peter a different motivation than we've seen before, and Michael Keaton as the Vulture is a great Spider-Man villain and gives one of the greatest twists in a Spider-Man film that we've seen thus far. However, what ultimately keeps this movie being at number 4 for me and not in the number 3 spot where I have the next movie is the inclusion of Spider-Man having a Iron Man type suit with an AI device in it that he calls Karen. It does feel a little bit too much like Iron Man and not as much as Spider-Man to me. Even though I don't hate the decision, I do prefer Spider-Man without it. And while the small scale action in this is fun, I just feel like the next movie on the list does the Spider-Man action just a little bit better. And that movie is going to be Spider-Man Far From Home. I wasn't sure how I felt about Spider-Man Far From Home, if I liked it more than Homecoming or not with the first time I saw it. I caught it again for the second time last night with a friend and after watching it again, I do put this movie above Homecoming. 
While I believe that Spider-Man Homecoming has the tighter script, and the first little bit of Spider-Man Far From Home includes some stuff that doesn't necessarily feel like the movie wants it in there, and feel like a kind of generic high school rom-com, the second half of the movie definitely delivers on the Spider-Man-isms. The second half of this movie is a great Spider-Man movie. It's got the best Spider-Man action since probably the Sam Raimi films. Peter Perkle's struggle in this movie is one that almost everyone can relate to, which makes him so relatable, which also makes it one of the most grounded and relatable struggles that we've seen Peter Parker have on the big screen thus far. Tom Holland gives a great performance of Peter Parker, and the personal conflict as well as the emotional conflict that's going on within Peter that John Watts and the Marvel Cinematic Universe gives to Peter in this movie is one that I really like. Also adding a great romantic interest in Michelle Jones, aka MJ, played by Zendaya, with the perfect amount of awkward chemistry between Zenzaya and Tom Holland as Peter Parker and Michelle Jones. And you have a romance in a Spider-Man film that honestly, for me, kind of rivals Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is also really great. It really lends the movie to some fantastic action sequences. Even though I feel the first half is a very generic high school rom-com, the second half of this movie I think is a fantastic Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man action sequences in this movie are on a bigger scale and they look great. They're shot better than I believe in Homecoming and that's what puts this movie above Homecoming for me. Add a fantastic and shocking ending that leaves me very excited to see where they're going to go with a third Spider-Man movie and Spider-Man in the MCU in general. And you have Spider-Man Far From Home as my third favorite live action Spider-Man movie. Alright, so coming in at number two, we have Sam Raimi's very first Spider-Man movie. While I really like what they're doing with Spider-Man in the MCU and the different take that they're taking on the character, and while Tom Holland is my personal favorite Peter Parker because I find him the most relatable, there's a lot of times where Tom Holland's on screen and I just see myself in him. Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie really demonstrates why I love the character of Spider-Man and Peter Parker so much and is the movie that really captures the Spider-Man that I love. The pace on this movie is so fantastic. The origin story is one of the best origin stories ever told in a superhero movie and the tone that Sam Raimi sets for the movie feels really consistent all the way through. It's a lot of fun. It doesn't really take itself very seriously which leads itself to a lot of fun action and a movie that never really has a dull moment to me. Uncle Ben's death is the most impactful it's ever been in any of the Spider-Man films and you really see how that affects Peter Parker's character and molds him and motivates him to be Spider-Man in this film, more so than any live action Spider-Man film has ever captured. And while Tobey Maguire may not be the most relatable Peter Parker, he really does capture that bookworm that was in the 60s comics. And he plays the character of Peter Parker that fits Sam Raimi's vision in this movie very well. Add a really fun, if not hokey, performance by Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. And you have a really fun, fast-paced, exciting Spider-Man origin movie. One that the live-action films still have yet to surpass. And with Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie coming in at number two, my number one live-action Spider-Man movie is... Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 has held up, in my opinion, tremendously well. The action sequences are still a lot of fun and much bigger than the first Spider-Man movie. The CGI looks fantastic still to this day. Spider-Man swinging around the city has not looked any better, in my opinion. And this movie captures what no movie has ever captured quite as well, in my opinion, which is the eternal struggle that Peter Parker has of struggling his personal life with his superhero life. Peter Parker, played by Tom McGuire in this movie, is constantly being beaten down by life. Nothing is going right for him. He can't get the girl. His best friend resents him because he's taking pictures of who he believes is the murderer of his father. The relationships are falling apart. He's having money troubles. And if that's not bad enough, he's having trouble controlling his Spider-Man powers just when a new villain of Doc Ock enters the scene. And even though I'm not entirely thrilled with how the loss of his powers relates all the way back to Mary Jane because the Mary Jane and Peter Parker relationship in the Raimi films is not one that I'm entirely invested in, Spider-Man 2 I think really captures the Peter Parker character perfectly. I think Tobey Maguire gives a really great performance, one that has been overshadowed by a really goofy one in Spider-Man 3 because that was his last impression to the audience. I think Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire gives a really great performance as this Peter Parker. The Spider-Man action is great as I mentioned before, but just the look at Peter Parker and the perfect capture of that character that I love so much is what keeps Spider-Man 2 as my favorite Spider-Man movie. Anyway guys, those are my rankings of my least favorite to favorite live action Spider-Man films. But now I want to hear from you guys. What is your favorite and least favorite Spider-Man live action film? Comment down below, let me know. And if you want to include Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, I'll allow it. Anyway guys, that is the last Spider-Man movie video that I will be making for a little while. Not all of the movies are great, but I can't say that I hate any of them. Each iteration of Peter Parker has given something new and something that I have liked in the character. 
And if I'm being honest, each one of these movies has given me a moment where I have smiled just seeing Spider-Man on the big screen. Each one of these movies has captured, in some way or another, who Spider-Man and who Peter Parker is and the character that I've loved for so long. And so while I may not love all of these movies, I am pretty thankful that they are here and exist for the small little enjoyments that they have given me. Anyway guys, that's all I have to say about the Spider-Man movies today. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking out my channel. As always, my name is Zachary Milne. Thank you for talking movies with me, and hope you have yourself a great day.